Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you are watching Tech with Prey. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another tech video. Now this is the 12th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow. So in my last video, we have understood the detailed concept of business rules. That is one of the customization, one of the important customization in ServiceNow that we have learned. And also I've shown you how you can configure business rules and what are the different types of business rules, uh, business rules available and most importantly I've shown you example in practically in my personal developer instance like how you can create your business rules right so I hope you practiced a lot guys because that's you need to practice it in your own development environment and also today's video right but before going to today's video if you miss my last video guys don't worry I'm gonna put the link in the description and also you can find the link right now here on your screen all right so let's see what we are going to learn today. Okay, so today we are going to learn another ServiceNow customization, another very important customization, which is client script. Okay, so let's start. So what is client script? So before going into client script, let me tell you, you are maybe referring like Pritam, there is a script mention. That means we need to write a lot of code and we need to understand stuff like that. Uh, partially correct, right? For an example, like, to create client script you have to write a code because it's not like a business rule where you can set up conditions but don't worry the code will be very very simple and for the system administrator examination you have to understand that how client script is working that's why i will show you with a little bit of coding that how it is working but trust me each and every line i will explain you and it is very very simple we are not going to go in a you know difficult scenario we will deal with easy scenario how are the what are the scenario that we can solve with the help of client script that i will show you so that you know the concept of client script clear for you and also you prepare for the examination right now when we will go in our service now developer course there i will explain you in detail like different difficult scenario complex scenario where you will solve it with the help of client script and by then we will learn a lot of coding with javascript right okay so what is client script so very simply service now customization definitely it is and it runs in the client side so we have seen the last video business rules which runs over the server side right so whichever change you do like it depends like you are inserting the record updating deleting the record so in a same way this i mean client script is the coding or the scripting to perform client side work okay client side means our browser okay and it generally works in the form view okay but it can also be applied in the list view i'll show you how it can be applied in the list view so make sure you watch the full video and so that you understand the whole concept right now this is the image of the client script like how you can create client script so this is an image from service now don't worry i'll go there and i'll explain you each and every field all right so let's understand different types of client script so first we have the onload okay now again detail explanation of it we will go in slides and also i'll show you example of all these types so let's first see what are the types we have in client script so onload right when your form is onloading in the browser that time if you mention some script there so that will work that's the onload then we have on submit when you are submitting the form okay or you're saving the form so you can put client script in there also on changes when you are changing any field value in the form in that case also you can apply client script and finally on cell edit so if you are editing any cells value which is already there for an example like this can be applied in a list view so there also you can apply client script right so on load on submit on changes on cell edit these are the four types now we will see each of this topic and we'll see what are the examples and how we'll solve it so first we have the on load so onload it runs when the form is open and before user can enter any data so when you open the form it just run there but you can configure it with scripting we have seen in display business rule similar kind of thing but here you can configure more advanced top advanced thing in the client end so for an example if user opens a p1 ticket it should display the message saying you are viewing viewing a p1 ticket so we will go to the list of the incident okay and there I will open the p1 incident and it will show me the message not for any other incident only the p1 incidents whichever the p1 incidents are there in my list view in incident 
so i will apply it there only okay so let's see how we can do that very quickly so i'm in my developer instance so let's quickly go to the incident page so i will open a uh, service desk incident so now i am viewing the incident all list so from here let me open any uh, p1 incident so there's a p1 incident here email server is down let me open it so right now we have the p1 incident open and there is no message is showing right so this, this is the one we have created for the business rules also so right now there is no message showing so what do we want whenever we open a p1 incident service now will understand that and will show me that message like what was the message the message is you are viewing a p1 ticket okay so let's configure it so again to go to the configure i need to click on the menu and then configure and then from here client scripts okay so the client script is open so these are the list of client script that is available for our incident table you can see 23 so you can again go any of them and you know you can learn about it how it has been applied so i'm going to create a one so i'll click on the new button so this is we are doing on load right so this is a client script form view it's opening so here we have to define a name so let me define a name and also i will explain the uh, fields meaning of this different fields so this will be the on on load right so on load and uh, client skip cs so that's the name i've given so this is working in incident table so ui type so what is the user interface where it this client script will work where do you want so we have option like desktop mobile service portal or all like both of the views so i'll choose all so it will work in both of the views then the type this is the important type that we have already discussed like on sell edit on change on load on submit so what we want is that on load on load client script once i click on load you can see there is a script section here and it is already mentioning function on load so if i change it to on change then the function will change to on change and their different parameters will come up okay so no need to understand the different parameters as of now again we'll explain it in the developer video okay so for the time being let's let's just choose on on load and here it is applying in the global application it is currently active inherited means you can inherit you know like for an example uh We'll understand more about it in the table so it's like the incident table it's inherited or like many of the fields of incident table is inherited from the tax table okay so now if we apply anything any client script in the tax table and if i want to inherit it the same in the incident table i can do that by clicking on this button okay so this is how but inheritation and also like what are the deleted tables and how it works extended table everything we will discuss in our next section uh, where we will understand about the tables okay so don't worry about that and it, again it is visible in the global so globally it is clicked now description you can put some description here uh, i'll just put here a short description sorry message when priority is one okay uh, so you can put something in the message section also so i'll just go ahead and write the script so pretty simple again two line script i'm going to write guys just two lines okay so first we need to check like whenever i will open the p1 incident so the client script or the form needs to understand or service now needs to understand that this is a p1 incident so how it will understand so it has to take the value of priority which is showing in the form okay so for that I will store the very value of the priority, the current, I mean, whenever I will open the form and whatever the priority value is there, it will pick up in the variable, right? So I have to store the value of priority field in the, in a variable. So let's choose anything like, let's choose priority, name of the variable, then equal to. So G form we are going to use that will, uh, you know, help me to get the value. So I'll type get value. And here I will write the name of the field that is priority. So this is very simple, right? And then we are, we are going to check that whether if priority is equal to equal to one, we're going to check, right? It is one or not. So if priority is one, then there should be an alert message or a message will come up and say you are viewing p1 incident pretty simple right 
we'll turn the semicolon here that's it there is no else we need to need not to mention so first we are getting what is the current value of priority and checking if it is one if it is one it will show you are viewing a p1 incident that's it i'm going to save this done and i'll open the incident form incident list so incident dot i'll write in capital so that it open in a new tab sorry at least so there is another secret guys so if you write the table name dot capital list or capital form it will open the list view and the form view of the table in the new tab okay so now here we have this p1 incident again i also open it this one email server is down and let's see we are getting the message or not the form is loading yes and you get a message you are viewing a p1 incident so it's working i'll go back and i'll try to open another incident to see if there is a message or not there should not be because it is only it should be applied for the p1 only so this is a p5 incident guys and you see there is no message coming up because the client script is working only if there is a p1 right so we have completed with this so now one on submit so again you can understand by the name so it will run when you so it will run when you are trying to submit a form right so previously it was a loaded when you, when the form is loading and this one is on submit so whenever you are trying to submit the form so there you can apply the client script so see what we are going to do so it was quite similar uh, like the previous one like we have done now here if user try to create a p1 incident it should show a confirmation box saying you want to create a p1 incident if user press yes then only it will submit the form so let's create a new client script and let's do it so i'm in the list view of the incident now and here i will go to the configuration configure and then client scripts so here i'll create a new one and this time it will be on submit okay so again little bit of coding so almost it would be same like the previous one the coding a little one extra if loop i'm going to add okay so this one would be on submit cs client script incident table let it let it be desktop doesn't matter now here i will do on submit active global now the function on submit is there so again i will quickly create the variable priority and i'll put the value of the priority field i'll put it the semicolon now here again i will check if priority equal to equal to 1 if it is 1 now what we are going to do if it is 1 so we are going to confirm the user input where input so let's take the user input what user choose we have to take in a variable so we are input equal to confirm right and this will show the confirmation box okay the question is being asked full stop now if input equals to equals to true okay that means if user press the okay button it's a boolean value so i will define true and false then return true that may it will progress further and else return false okay done simply so we are getting the priority field value we are checking if it is a one if it is a one then it is asking the confirmation that is sure you want to create a p1 incident so user is clicking on okay or cancel anything so if it is okay then returning if it is not okay or user creating cancel then it, then it is returning false so if it is okay then only the incident will be created so i'll save it and quickly i'll show you i'll go to the form view of the incident so again incident dot form in capital now here i'll put the caller name any assignment group short description so p1 sorry impact urgency 11 so priority is 
So now I'm trying to save it. And you see, are you sure you want to create a P1 incident? It is asking me. Let's click on cancel first time. So it is not creating, right? So client script is working. And also let's try this time, click on OK. And now you see the incident is created. So with the help of the client script, you can see how we can achieve it, right? So let's go back. And next we have the on changes. So it's pretty simple. So when you run, so it runs when you change any field value, okay, in, in the form, right? Whenever you change a field value in the form, this will work. So, now, so what he's saying, if you change the value of the state field, it shows a message saying you change the value of the field. Okay, pretty simple. So we will go back to our client script. So we can edit this one also, but let's create a new one. Let it be here. So, okay. So the name of the client script table is, sorry. So it's sys underscore script underscore client. Okay, that's the name of the client script table. So I'll go to list. Like for the business rule, it was sys underscore script. For client script, it is sys underscore script underscore client. Okay. Now here, I will create another one. And this one will be on change. And this will be real quick. So on change CS. And now I have to mention the table name because I opened the global, uh, the, you know, the client script table, uh, client script table, not specifically on the incident form. So I need to mention the table name here. So incident. Okay, now I'll choose the type as on change. Now, if I choose the type on change, now here I have to name uh, the field. So which field I want to change? So I want to change the field called state, right? Incident state. So whenever the state will change, so it will just give me a message. So I will just write alert. And the message was, you have changed the field value, simple field value, semicolon and it's done. See how simple it is. And now I will quickly go to the incident.list view because I will open an incident, existing incident and I'll try to change the value of it. So let's open an incident. Let's open this one test BR. It's a P5 incident. Doesn't matter. The state is currently on hold. So let's change it to anything, maybe uh, assigned. And you see, whenever you are changing the value of the state, it is showing you have changed the value, field value, right? So the client script is working again. So we are done with the three one and last we left with the on cell edit. So here it runs when you change a field value of a list. Okay. Let's see the scenario. If user changes the value of a short description field in a list view, it should ask for a confirmation saying, do you want to update the short description? So let me show you. So right now I'm in the list view of the incident. Now from here you can see, uh, let's refresh it. Okay. So now let's try to, you know, if you can, now from here, if you double click on any of the short description field and you can see, you can change it and you can save it and it is saved right now, right? So the scenario is saying that again, when you try to update it, it should ask you for a, you know, confirmation. Now here, the scenario based on the scenario, the coding would be a little bit complex here, just a bit. Okay. So I don't want to go there because there are a lot of explanation required for that, but just know that to use on sale edit function with the help of on sale edit function, you can edit the value of a list field and you can save it. Okay. And you can perform this scenario also. Now, I hope you understand guys that with the help of client script, we can perform so many scripting in the client end, in the browser end, and we can do so many customization, right? So I hope the concept is clear, which is very, very important because that's what is required in the system administrator examination. So I hope you enjoy the video guys. Thanks for watching. If you find it helpful, hit the like button. If you have any query, put in the comment section and also don't forget to share this video with your friends and family so that it can reach out to many people. Okay. See you in my next video. Bye-bye. Take care.